house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. As a child, the house made me uncomfortable in a way I couldn't put into words. Now, as a 17-year-old, I knew exactly what those words were. I was afraid of the house. I hoped the key might unlock the front door. It didn't. Looking in, I felt like the house itself had been waiting for me. For the first time in years, I felt like I was home. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. Like how after Lewis started working at the cannery, we all got sick of eating salmon. Except our cat, Molly. Or how only one restaurant would deliver to our house. So we had Chinese a lot. The table was still a wreck from the night we left. It was like a bomb had gone off, killing everyone but sparing the furniture. Nothing in the house looked abnormal. There was just too much of it, like a smile with too many teeth. Even the fireplace had a story. Edie told me the bricks came from the original house, after it sank. Mom always told me to stay out of the basement, so I wasn't too surprised when the key didn't fit. Great Grandpa Sven built a music box for Barbara, along with the rest of the house. I spent a lot of time playing in Great Uncle Walter's room. I think my mom sometimes regretted not sealing it up. Lewis told me there were secret passages, but I never believed him. Turns out, my mom was really good at keeping secrets. Now it was time to find out what my mom had been afraid of. From the paintings on the wall, it was clear my brother Milton had been here before me. Reading this, maybe it sounds like I had a plan. 
but I had no idea what was behind that door. <laughs> Just like I had no idea where all this was gonna lead. I grew up looking at Molly's room through the peephole. December 13th, 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone soon, but I wanted to tell somebody about what's gonna happen. It started when Mom sent me to bed without dinner. I woke up and I was starving, so I looked around for something to eat. The gerbil food was dry, but I didn't mind it. Mom, can I come out now? Sweetheart, it's late. Go to sleep. I thought about eating Christopher, but I held back. of things that night. I kept eating and eating. Then I heard chirping outside my window. It was a barn swallow going back to her nest. I reached out for her. Suddenly, I was a cat. I tried to be quiet, but the bird was really scared. She was getting really tired. Now I was up in the big tree. I promised Dad I wouldn't climb it anymore. All I, I cared gobbled about. her up. And suddenly, I was an owl. First, all I heard was the wind. Then I heard little teeth nibbling in the grass. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Sam! Calvin! Dinner's ready! Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Alvin, I'm not gonna tell you again. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. The day he made up his mind to fly, and he did.
Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Edie's father, Odin, built the original house. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara. Barbara. 